Welcome to Pentecostal Preaching Channel. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy what you see. Hit the bell to be notified when something new is uploaded. Have a great day. Amen. If you take your Bible and open it to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 33. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse number 13. We're going to read through verse number 17. And uh, I believe that's Sister Natalia back there. We will probably, I'll give you a title here at some point, perhaps, perhaps not. And uh, But we will be going through these scriptures, and, and I'll probably ask you to bring the, this reference up again. Deuteronomy 33, verse number 13. If you have it, say amen. Moses is blessing Israel. And he is going through the majority of the tribes. Seems like one dude got skipped. We'll talk about that. But verse 13 says, And of Joseph he said, Blessed Of the Lord be his land. Man, I want God to bless me. I've preached that so many different ways. And uh, praise God. Bless the sound system. I've preached that so many different ways. But I want to, I'll touch on it again tonight. I want God's blessings on our lives. It's not my subject, but it's part of what we're going to talk about. Blessed of the Lord be his land for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath, and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun, and for the precious things put forth by the moon. I want you to notice some of the things he's talking about here in this blessing for Joseph are in contrast to each other. They are in some ways, if not opposites, they're in tension with each other. He wants him to be blessed from heaven, blessed from beneath blessed by the sun, blessed by the moon. 15, and for the chief things of the ancient mountains and for the precious things of the lasting hills and for the precious things of the earth, hills, mountains, earth, and fullness thereof. And I like this, for the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. Let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. That's a wild ox. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Amen. Why don't we put our Bibles down, and let's pray together, and ask that God would be with us these next few minutes. Would you help me pray? Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you that we're in your presence and that you're in our, uh, in our presence and that you're here to do great things. Let the word go forth in power. Let your spirit touch us. We give you thanks and praise and glory. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Amen. Before you're seated, shake hands with somebody again. Tell them we're glad you're here in God's house tonight. Deuteronomy chapter number 33 is the record of Israel being blessed by Moses. In this chapter, God, through Moses, is blessing the 12 tribes of Israel. That is, all of them except for Simeon. Um, And some find him being blessed in this chapter as well. Genesis uh, 49 is a chapter that's much like our text tonight. We read from Deuteronomy 33, of course. And uh, Deuteronomy 33 is much like Genesis 49. In Genesis, excuse me, in Deuteronomy 33, God is using Moses uh, to bless the tribes. And in Genesis 49, God, through Jacob, is giving a blessing or at least a prophecy, because some of them are not very, uh, they're not very much of a blessing, more of a curse upon uh, the various tribes of Israel. It's, it's interesting to compare and contrast 
these blessings, the blessing of Jacob, the blessing of Moses. We won't spend much time on that, but it is worthy of study. And to see how, again, God through Jacob in Genesis 49, and then God through Moses in our text, Deuteronomy 33, would bless the individual tribes. For instance, when God spoke through Jacob and Moses about the tribe of Judah, both of their prophecies are positive in tenor. They are both good, but, but they're different prophecies. When you uh, look at the prophecy of Reuben, and I should have probably started with him because both of them are listed first in, in, in Jacob's blessing of the tribe of the tribes and Moses' blessing of the tribes. Both of them are first, but they are, they are different from each other. I, I alluded quickly to uh, Simeon. Uh, let me say in Genesis 49, when Jacob speaks of Simeon, Simeon, along with Levi, gets slammed. It's not very much of a blessing by Jacob. And, uh, and then in Deuteronomy 33, Simeon doesn't even get uh, mentioned by Moses. There are some that, that find him in some obscure texts or, or, or uh, uh, copies of texts of Scripture along with Reuben, but he's not found in Deuteronomy 33. When you read about Levi, Jacob is very rough on Levi, but in Moses' blessing, uh, it, it gets much better. Uh, when you read about Zebulun, Jacob and Moses talking about Zebulun, they're, they're, the prophecy about them is different, but although you can catch a, a common thread of the two, and that is that both Jacob and Moses reference Zebulun uh, in context of being beside the seaside and by the sea, the sand, and uh, which to me is interesting. It's odd, and uh, I appeal to the Bible scholars here tonight because when you look at Zebulon uh, in the Bible descriptions of where he was located uh, in the land of promise, or easier, make it easy on yourself. Just go to the back of your Bible where all the maps are. Zebulon is not by the seaside that I can tell. So when you figure that out, help me with that. Some of, I've got some theories on that. Um, and then Issachar. Issachar is, is prophesied by Jacob and Moses in different ways. And, and he's barely mentioned, just barely mentioned. I could barely find him in Deuteronomy 33 in Moses' blessing. And so on it goes through the tribes. But... But most interesting to me and the subject of tonight's lesson or teaching or preaching, whatever it ends up being, uh, is the blessing that Joseph receives. Of all of them, Joseph receives the most beautiful blessing. And of all of them, uh, of all of them Joseph's blessing of Jacob and from Moses are the most uh, similar between Genesis 49 and Deuteronomy 33. In fact, if you read the two, it's, it's again, we know that Moses, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, is, is speaking, but it's, it's like he borrows much of his blessing from what Jacob said in Genesis 49. But one of the things I want you to notice, and we're going to focus on the blessing of, of Jacob, and, or excuse me, the blessing of, of, of Joseph, and uh, I do, I am aware that that when we talk about Joseph, we're referencing two tribes. We're, we're referencing Ephraim and Manasseh, who were the two sons of Joseph. But for the purposes of this message, I'm, I'm going to mainly apply it to Joseph in his life specifically. But when you read this blessing in Deuteronomy 33, one of the things that I want you to notice, and perhaps you did, is this blessing that God gives him is full of contrasts. God wants him to be blessed in verse, number, uh, in verse number 13. He references blessings that come from heaven and blessings that come from the deep that is beneath. He talks about being blessed from the sun and then contrasts it being blessed with the precious things of the moon. He talks about 
It talks about how it refer- he references the chief things of the mountains and of the hills and of the earth. And then he talks about the goodwill of him that dwells in the bush. And I, I think in some ways this is kind of, uh, kind, of, kind of relates to the man that he's talking about in the first place, which is the life of Joseph. How many, when you read your Bible, enjoy reading about Joseph? He's just fun to read about. It's a good ending. Joseph's life is, is, is a beautiful life. But one thing you know about Joseph's life is it's full of contrasts. Joseph, his life is full of dreams. But it's also full of broken dreams. It's, we read about Joseph being the favorite of his father and hated by his brothers. People lied about Joseph, and others all but worshipped Joseph. When you read the life of Joseph, it's the story from the pit to the palace, from the prison to the throne. Joseph's life is, is full of contrasts. And I'll just tell you, if you hadn't figured it out yet, brothers and sisters, so are, so are our lives. Our lives are full of these contrasts. I, I, I may sound like I'm going to take a little segue here for a moment, but I, uh, there's something that I struggle with. And uh, I'll just tell you, I, I struggle finding balance in my life. I work at it all the time. But is there anybody that, that has a desire to be more balanced in the different parts and areas of your life? Amen. I was thinking about it today. It's, it's difficult. It's like when you get one, thing's fi- one thing figured out, something else suffers. Amen. Have you ever noticed, and maybe this doesn't happen to you, but sometimes when I really get in a spirit of prayer, I'm like, oh, now I need to read my Bible. And then I get prayer and Bible reading and balance, and then I realize I need to fast. And then I start fasting, and I don't want to read my Bible or pray. I don't want to do nothing. And, uh, and then you get the spiritual all together, and then you feel like you're neglecting your family. Anybody ever felt that way? Hey, Amen. I'm praying good, but, man, I'm, I, need to get, I need to be a better father. I need to be a better husband. I need to be a better son. I need to do this. And then you get the family part good, and, and then you th- hear pastor get up and talk about soul winning and Bible studies and outreach and and so you go on outreach, and then your wife says, why weren't you with us, you know, today? <laughs> and uh, that, didn't, that doesn't happen at our house. I'm, I'm being serious. I, anyway. And, uh, and, and, and you're trying to get all these parts together. And then you realize that, well, I, how about this? Then I realize that I'm overweight, and uh, I need to diet. And because I'm gaining weight, my health's getting affected. And so I diet, and... And uh, when you diet, you don't feel like exercising. If you exercise, you feel like eating more. And, and then you get that together, and then you notice that the lawn needs mowed, and the car needs washed, and the oil changed, and the washing machine breaks down. And then you notice you're mad, and you quit praying again. And there you go, and you start all over again. And come on, anybody ever struggle with any of this? Hey, I'm preaching now. Well, brothers and sisters, this is called life. And this is a struggle of life, just trying to find balance. But I believe that it is God's will for God's people to find this thing called balance. And I believe that part of balance in life comes from God's smile and favor being on us. Hey, I, I think you have noticed, like I, you that have been in church for a while, you that are faithful perhaps in your giving and your tithe paying, I, I have found that when God's favor is on my money, it just goes a whole lot further. I found that when I give God my time, the time that's left. God honors it and blesses it, and it goes a whole lot further. And that's why tonight I want the blessings of God on my life. I want to be balanced, and I want God's blessings on my life. But I'll tell you this about God's blessing. God knows also how to give a balanced blessing. Amen. God doesn't, he doesn't just give chocolates and roses and... uh, and uh, rainbows and unicorns. God gives what we need. Have you noticed that living for God is not just bright sunny days and mountaintop experiences? Has anybody found out it rains sometimes and there's valley sometimes 
and the car breaks down sometime. I would tell you that, believe it or not, sometimes rainy days and valleys and broke down cars are part of the blessing that God gives to his children and that God gave to Joseph through Moses in Deuteronomy 33. What I want to teach about tonight is the fact that I believe God can give balanced blessings that produce a well-rounded life. And that's what I want to use for a title if you're keeping track back there. A balanced blessing. Somebody say a balanced blessing for a well-rounded life. Somebody say for a well-rounded life. I want to be everything that God wants me to be. I, want to, I know that we all have strengths, but I, I really want it to be that there's some days when I'm praying, I'm just like, God, help me everywhere. I need help everywhere. I'm just a mess. I need, help. I need help with praying. I need help with my Bible reading. I need help with pastoring. I need help with parenting. I need help with my marriage. I need help with my finances. I need help with my washing machine. I've got washing machines on the brain. We just had to buy a new one. I need help in every area of my life. Is there anybody that's ever felt that way? I've come to tell you that God is interested in every area of your life. If you're new here, let me just tell somebody, God knows how to bless your life with a balanced blessing. He doesn't just give you cotton candy blessings. God doesn't give you, just give you syrupy blessings that you eat and give you a sugar rush and, and then you're worse than you were before. But God, as a good father, knows how to give good gifts, knows how to give balanced blessings, knows how to give exactly what you need that produce a well-rounded, mature Christian life. And I'm praying that somebody tonight would say, God, I want to be everything that you want me to be in every area of my life. Amen. Is there anybody that wants to be better at praying? Anybody want to be better at reading your Bible? Anybody want to be better at winning souls? Is there any wives that want to be better wives? Any husbands be, want to be better, better husbands? Any parents want to be better at parenting your children? Any children want to be better at being a child to your parents? Is there anybody that wants to do better in just your job, in your work, in your occupation? I've, I'm here to tell you tonight that God cares about every area, every aspect of your life, and God wants to bring us up and higher and better. We can be blessed for a well-rounded life. If you feel that way and are hungry for that, I want us, before we go any further, just to lift our hands and let's pray together. Come on, let's pray together. Come on, let's pray with fervency. God, I want to be better. I want to be a well-rounded Christian. God, I don't want to be out of balance. Come on, lift your voice, men. I, you need to pray it like you feel it. God, I want to get this right. Young men, we need to pray it. God, help me to be everything, everything. Oh, hallelujah. Now let's thank God that he's able to help us for that. Somebody ought to lift your voice and thank him together. <laughs> hallelujah. Amen, amen. And so, that's exactly what God is giving Joseph here in Deuteronomy chapter 33. It is a balanced blessing for a well-rounded life. I want to take a few minutes. I want to talk about this blessing that God gave Joseph. Notice, first of all, in verse number 33, the fact that the Lord, through Moses, says that he would be blessed of the Lord and that his land would be blessed for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath. I want to read this in another version. The NIV says that it references being blessed with the precious dew from heaven above and with the deep waters from that lie below. It's obvious when you read this, there's a contrast here. The Bible's talking about being blessed from heaven and being blessed not just from the earth, but from beneath the earth. He's talking about being blessed with the dew of heaven. Everybody say the dew of heaven. I want to talk about this for a moment. I, I believe that it's important that we are blessed from heaven. And I want us to notice, first of all, in, 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 in talking about this dew of heaven, please note that it is God that gives it. Amen. I want everything that God has for me. 
The Bible says in Job 38 and 28, it references the dew and asks the question, who hath begotten the drops of dew? It's evident. It's referring to God. In Psalm 133 and 3, the psalm that talks about unity, it references the dew of Hermon and the dew that had descended upon the mountains of Zion. And it says of that dew in that place where the dew landed, that there the Lord commanded the blessings, even life forevermore. One of the pretty sights that meets your eye if you wake up early enough in the morning and uh, if it's the right time of year in Southern California in this dry area is, is, drew, is dew and dew droplets being all over the grass on the surrounding greenery. God gave the dew for a reason. This dew from heaven is, 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 a, is a big deal. And, and literally in agriculture and in plant life, Dew is a, a big deal. It's a major water source. And one of the main reasons that dew is so important is dew happens a lot more frequently than rain. In between the rain, the dew is what is sustaining them. And I, I just want to stop and tell some people this. We need the rain of the Spirit. We want the Holy Ghost to fall. I've preached before, brothers and sisters, we are not an irrigation-based church meaning that where we just produce the glory of God whenever we want. We're a church that's always looking to the heavens saying, God, send the rain. Oh, hallelujah, aren't you glad that he sends the rain of his spirit? Every time he comes into this house, there ought to be a Holy Ghost thankfulness that says, God, thank you again for sending the rain tonight. I don't ever want to get to where I take for granted the fact that God's spirit falls in. Hey, I felt the Holy Ghost right now. I felt him earlier in the song service. I felt him in, in pre-service prayer. Anybody thankful for the reign of the Holy Ghost? Amen. But I also believe that God sends dew from heaven. There is just an ongoing moisture of the spirit that God wants to be in our hearts and lives. What I'm saying is in between church services, there needs to be some dew that God is sending from heaven. Amen. I don't want it to be that I, the only time I get, I get watered is on the rainfall of Sunday night. Amen. I want the Holy Ghost to be, I want to wake up every morning and look around there to be a little moisture in my life. Amen. I don't want to be a dead, dry desert where there is never any dew from heaven. I want God's spirit on my marriage, on my home, on my washing machine. I want the Holy Ghost on every aspect of my life. And I believe that God can be with us throughout the week. Amen. I also read about dew, that dew helps plants. It helps them to accelerate their, their metabolism. It helps do, plants to increase uh, their biomass. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying dew helps plants grow faster and grow bigger and stronger. Amen. If you're here tonight and there's a hunger in you to grow bigger and faster and stronger and do more for God, then you need to pray that God would send the dew of heaven in your life. Amen. I want the rain of Wednesday night Bible study. I want the rain of Sunday morning Holy Ghost Church. I want the rain of Sunday night. But brothers and sisters, I can't wait until Sunday to get blessed. Hallelujah. I need some Holy Ghost moisture in my life. And I'm here to preach to somebody tonight. If you'll let the Holy Ghost move in you, it'll be with you every day of your life. Oh, hallelujah. There can be new moisture on the ground when you wake up in the morning. Amen. The dew of heaven. Somebody say the dew of heaven. It also plays an essential role in helping plants regulate the inner water. Helps them to activate photosynthesis rapidly. Amen. It helps them to stay moist. It helps them to be refreshed. It, 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 it helps soil moisture conditions. Dew drops on the soil decrease soil evaporation loss. It helps the soil conditions. It helps to avoid erosion. I'm here to tell you we cannot wait from Sunday to Wednesday and Wednesday to Sunday to have God move in our lives. Amen. There's too much going on. There's too much stress. There's too much that can get out of balance. We need the Holy Ghost to saturate the soul of our flesh. Hallelujah. To saturate our flesh, to saturate our mind, to saturate the soil of our spirit. Amen. We can't be eroding between Sunday and Wednesday and Wednesday and Sunday. I'm here to tell somebody that God can help you Monday and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. 
I want the dew of heaven to be on my life. I want God's spirit when I wake up in the morning. Hallelujah. When I reach out my hand, I can feel the dew of the Holy Ghost. I want it to be on my family. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody receive this. I, I want it to be on my prayer. I don't only want to pray uh, dry prayers. I want to pray fresh prayers uh, where the anointing flows. Uh, I want to pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, I don't want my Bible reading to just be out of habit or because the pastor talks about it. Uh, But I want every now and then for the word of God uh, just to saturate my spirit and my soul. Anybody interested in the dew of heaven being in your life? Come on, clap your hands and thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Somebody say the dew of heaven. Tell your neighbor it's a blessing from God. But also the blessing of Joseph, the balanced blessing for a well-rounded life included in verse 13. Now, if you had put that up there, Sister Natalia, verse number 13. It also includes the deep that coucheth beneath. What that's talking about there, notice he he says, I want the land to be blessed from the heavens do, and from the deep that croucheth beneath. That's that's referring to waters that are under the ground. It is perhaps artesian wells. It is the water table. It is deep waters that lie below. Can I tell everybody here tonight, and again, is there anybody interested in, in being balanced and blessed in your life? Can I tell you, if you're interested in being blessed and balanced in your life, that there is water underneath your feet. Hey, there's, 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 there's moisture just a little bit down, but you just got to go after it. Amen. You got to reach for it. They talk about this, the water table that for plants, when farmers need that water, they got to access it a couple of ways. Amen. There's several ways, but one of the most obvious is by wells. They'll dig a well, they'll, they'll drive a well down, and they will access that water. Amen. I believe that is part of living for God is digging wells in our lives. Amen. And I want Sunday night's rainfall. I want Wednesday night rainfall. I want Monday, Tuesday dew from heaven. But I'm going to tell you, if somebody can get the revelation, hey, I'm going to get it all. I'm going to dig a well in my dry prayer meeting until I get through the dirt and down to the water pouring up because I want to be everything God wants me to be. I've come to tell you there are wells that you've not yet tapped in prayer. There are waters that you've not yet drank from in the word of God. There's refreshing, restoring moisture down deep in waters that you've never yet seen, but somebody's got to go after them. Come on, I'm trying to make somebody hungry. I'm trying to get somebody that'll be hungry enough to pray through the first 15 dry minutes of your prayer. Come on, you know what I'm talking about, that first 15 minutes uh, where you keep checking your phone. The first 15 minutes where you can't think about anything but other stuff. You'll talk to God, and then you'll talk to 15 other people. I'm here to encourage you, break through that dry crust of ground There's deep water down there. Somebody needs to dig a well. Somebody needs to dig a well. I I remember hearing years ago, Brother Lackey, do you remember Brother Steve Kelly in Kamei, Idaho? I remember going up to his property there in Kamei, Idaho. Had one of the most beautiful views you've ever seen overlooking this huge valley. And uh, there on top of that mountain, he was talking about a well that they had to dig. And uh, they brought a man out. And uh, the guy had his, his rig and his, his drilling rig, and he began to dig. And uh, they went down, 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 and he had a certain number of lengths of, of drill. And uh, if I remember correctly, he only had a couple left. And uh, the, it went down, and Brother Kelly was getting nervous. And uh, at that point, he pulled it up, and all of a sudden, water started coming up. And Brother Kelly's like, oh, thank God. And the man looked at him and said, that's, that's not a well. That's just a trickle. That's not what we're looking for. And so they pulled it out, added another length of, of, of the drill, and put it down. And all of a sudden, out of that ground, like a geyser, came water. Fresh water, cold, clean, clear water. And the man looked at Brother Kelly and said, now that's a well. 
Too many times we're content with just a little trickle of muddy water. Too many times we pray, and I pray until I just touch him. And I feel better because I've touched Jesus. And too many times we stop right before we break through the crust of our spirit and of our flesh. I'm here to encourage somebody. There's water down there. Somebody needs to keep digging. Hey, there's a balanced blessing from God. Thank God for the rain. Thank God for the dew. But there's a well Hey, there's deeps that are couched beneath. In Psalm 107, it talks about the deeps, and it talks about people that go out in the deep. They that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. Talking about sailors in the deep waters. And it says, these see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. I'm here to tell you, there are wonders of God when you get into the deep things of God. Oh, hallelujah. I I pray that somebody tonight would say, I'm tired of the shallows. I'm tired of the shallows. You know what I I also want? I pray that I would say, God, I'm tired of the shallows. I want to go deeper than I've ever done before. I want to put my well down. Hallelujah. I've read where some some plants can actually grow roots that will go far enough down if if the water table's high enough. So you, you may not even have to dig a well. Just get your roots down. Amen. If you're a new convert, don't stop. Don't be content with shallow roots. Put them down. There's deep, deep waters down in the deep things of God. Oh, hallelujah. I'm just talking about a blessing that can be a gushing from above, from the dew of heaven, and from the deep beneath. I'm looking for some people that will pray in the Spirit, in the Holy Ghost, read your Bible until there's actually saturation from the water in your life. And again, if you feel that way and are hungry for that, I want you to lift your hands. Come on, let's love the Lord. Let's love the Lord. Oh, let's love the Lord. Amen. Somebody say a balanced blessing for a well-rounded life. Deuteronomy 33 and 14, if you can put that one on the screen. The Bible says that God has more to Joseph's blessing. There is more elements to it and these also are in contrast the bible says in verse 14 notice this for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun everybody say the sun and for the precious things put forth by the moon everyone say the moon now we all know the benefits of the sun on plants we 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 know the benefits of the sun just in general the sun is the closest star to the earth, and uh, even at the distance of 93 million miles, it it, it has huge benefits gravitationally holding the planet in orbit. We know the sun has benefits. It radiates light, heat, solar energy, makes it possible for us to live on earth, and it makes it possible for plants to grow. That's what the Bible's talking about here, for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun. Without the sun... The earth would freeze. Without the sun, there would be no winds, no ocean currents, or clouds to transport water. The sun sun is used in in crops. They, they, They do crop rotation as a solar technique to increase harvests. In a lot of parts of the world, they dry the food. Here in the United States as well, with some crops. That's what they do with hay and different grains dry the food using sun and, and wind, and that prevents crops from spoiling. The sun brings forth precious fruits. But what's interesting here is that God, through Moses, in pronouncing a blessing on Joseph, also says, I want you to be blessed, notice this, by the precious things put forth by the moon. Somebody say the moon. Now that caught my attention. My question was, what in the world is precious that is brought forth by the moon? I began to look into it a little bit. I know, as you know, that the moon is the brightest and largest object in the night sky. The moon makes the earth a more livable presence. It helps in two major ways. Uh, It moderates 
our home planets wobble on its axis, and that leads to a relatively stable climate. And then, of course, I think most of us would know that the moon helps cause tides in the ocean, in the seas, creating a rhythm that has guided us and humans in agriculture for thousands of years, etc. But I also, as I begin to read about this, there are some things that literally the light of the moon seems to do that the sun cannot do when it comes to crops and agriculture. And then some weird plant life, coral, for instance, coral that you read in the ocean or hear, read about and hear about, see pictures of in the ocean, it seems to spawn in time with the lunar cycle, coral does. There's, there's some plants that are called werewolf plants. These are probably not very many people here growing them at home. But werewolf plants send out pollen in time with the full moon. They're not linked up to the sun in, when it comes to that. We know that the moon influences gravity, which tells roots to grow down rather than up. I read where the moon, it seems like, it might cause some of uh, foliage on plants, leaves and things, to rise and fall with the moon, similar to the movement of the tides. We don't have any idea why this is. Scientists haven't figured it out yet, but some speculate that maybe the moon, like it pulls on the ocean, pulls on the water and the plants. I've read elsewhere that they said that's nonsense, but they have observed this phenomenon. Uh, there's a thing called phytoplankton. I assume that's what whales eat. Plankton requires moonlight for photosynthesis. Obviously, not very many people in, there, in this church are growing plankton in your garden. Still, this shows that the moon is bringing forth some precious things. I, I don't know, and, and I read more about this. There's, there's a farmer's almanac, and, and literally there's been generations and millennia of people that try to farm based on the moon. Science kind of poo-poos that idea, says that's not a very good idea. There's not scientific basis for it. I don't know, but they are finding more and more that there is some merit to, to the moon's impact on crops. This I do know. I read it in my Bible tonight that there are precious things that are put forth by the moon. I'm here to tell you this. When it comes to the blessings of God, we need the sun, but we also there are some things that only happen under the gentle glow of the moon. I want God's blessings, but it includes the sun. It includes the moon. We need the light of the sun. But I want to talk to somebody for a moment. We also need the dark of the moon. Your prayer needs the light, the blazing light of the sun. But I'm also here to tell you part of the blessing of God is that your prayer needs the dark of the moon. Your if you're living faithfully for God, I, I want to just tell you something. If you haven't figured it out yet, your marriage benefits from the good days when the sun is shining. But have you realized it yet? If not, let me, in, let me let you in on a secret. That your marriage actually grows sometimes in the dark of the moon. There's some growth that only occurs when the sun goes down. What I'm telling you tonight is a balanced blessing from God includes the good times, but it also inclu includes the bad times. Brothers and sisters, there's some of you that right now, whether you like it or not, are growing in the dark. It's the moon that's producing some things in you. I was thinking about this, Brother Brian. I was thinking about some times in my life and when I grew, Brother Trailer, times that I grew faster than others, Brother Pierce. You know what's interesting? I hate it, Sister Johnson, but I think I grow faster in the dark. What I mean by that is I grow faster when things are going bad. I wish I grew faster when everything's going great, but when everything's going great, I just kind of enjoy it. But when things are going bad, you know when I do a lot of praying? Whew, when things are going bad, I run to the altar and I break through in prayer in new places in God. I, I, I didn't enjoy it when I was about 19 years old and I was living in another town and I was going on outreach for many, many months and I never won a soul one time. That was a dark time in my life. It really was. I would go home from church some nights. 
I really would. I remember, I remember standing by my, my car in the parking lot. I was the only one there. It wasn't a service night, and I was praying for souls. I was so excited about what God would do that Sunday. I remember there was a place across from our house. I would go up on this, this, this it was a sand dune, and I would stand up there, and I could see Highway 101, and I would pray for cars as they went by, and I would pray for the service that was coming up, and, and I was praying that God would fill somebody with the Holy Ghost. And I remember going home after the service where nobody got the Holy Ghost. Nobody was baptized, and I went home, and I was like, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't like this. But I'm going to tell you, I grew more during that time. I learned how to pray for souls. I learned how to travail. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I don't think this will happen, but I fear that we could raise a group of young people that because people get the Holy Ghost by the tens all the time, that, that maybe we get used to it and the sound of travail would not be heard in our youth group. I, I fear that we could get so used to the blessings of God that, that we wouldn't travail in the Holy Ghost, that it would happen so easy. We would just say, I'm not going to knock any more doors. I'm not going to reach for souls. I'm not going to care, for, brothers and sisters. I'm here to tell you, I, I didn't enjoy it, but God knew what he was doing to your pastor it probably kept me, it probably kept me from being a spiritual spoiled brat that thought he had it figured out. But I grew in the dark, and to this day, all I know is, God, we want revival. And I don't even know why revival comes, because I prayed in a royal grandy, and I prayed here. And I fasted there, and I fasted here. All I know is God's doing it, but God helped us to grow in the dark. Is there anybody that wants to be everything God wants you to be? Hey, you may be in the dark tonight. I want you to lift your hands and let's pray that God would help us. Oh, come on, talk to the Lord. I want to grow. I want to grow. I, uh, there's a time frame that your pastor really grew. I've been pastoring officially as pastor, pastor for seven years, or at least I will have in November. 2016 was the official installation. A couple years into the pastorate, I've never told this before in my life. I was two years as a pastor in 2018. I didn't enjoy it in 2018 when over 80 people came to me individually and sometimes as families and expressed to me, Pastor, I'm sorry, but we're going to be moving. And uh, obviously I never got up here and testified about that one. I love you, Pastor, and I love this church, but I'm thinking about relocating. And, uh, but I'm just here to tell you it was painful, and, and there was good reasons in many cases. But I grew as a pastor when I looked at each one of them and said what I knew was right. I said something like, on a personal level, I will miss you so very much, but I want God's best for you. I want God's will for you, and I'm going to help you pray. And if you choose to do that, I'll love you all the way there. And I'll love you all the way in the new place. I'm here to tell you, I grew in the dark. And I'm thankful that God's smile and favor is on us. But I'm here to tell somebody God's blessing is balanced. He doesn't just give popsicles. He doesn't just give cotton candy. He doesn't just give rainbows and unicorns and stick you on a mountaintop and leave you there for the rest of your life. I'm here to tell you, mountains and valleys and lowlands are what produce a well-rounded Christian. And what God is looking for is not hot house flowers. He's not looking for people that can only survive in the, the, the best of weather. He's not looking for plants that can only survive with a professional gardener looking over them. But he's looking for men and women that can be blessed of God from heaven and blessed from the depths and blessed in the sun and blessed in the dark. Anybody interested in being well-formed, well-rounded, being everything that God wants you to be? Why don't we lift our hands again? Let's praise him right now. Musicians, come. Let's talk to the Lord. Come on, let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. Let's talk to the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Let's talk. Come on, lift your hands. Let's talk to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, why don't we stand our feet? I've got more, but I'm, I think the point's being made. Lift your hands and let's talk to the Lord. Come on, lift your voice and talk to the Lord. Oh, I want to be everything you want me to be, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Verse number 15 is your standing tonight. I won't be long as the musicians begin to play. God moves on Moses, and he is echoing Jacob's prophecies from Genesis 49. It's pretty much the same thing. He begins to speak to Joseph, and he says, For the chief things of the ancient mountains, everybody say mountains, and for the precious things of the lasting hills. Somebody say hills. And then... First part of verse 16, for the precious things of the earth. Somebody say, the earth. God's balanced blessing includes mountains. I'm going to tell you, I like living on mountains. Sunday night, your pastor and you and all of us were on a mountain. We're still kind of on a mountain, honestly, but I'm getting you ready for the valley. Hallelujah. We were on the mountain. Seven people got the, Ivan got the Holy Ghost. Denisha got the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Man, what is wrong with my brain? I usually can rattle them off. Amen. A bunch of people got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Give me Eddie got the Holy Ghost. Angela got the Holy Ghost. Daniel got the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's starting to come. Hallelujah. Help me, Jesus. Princess got the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lily got the Holy Ghost. There's the seven. And then Bryce prayed through. And Ari, Ariana prayed through. Seven got the Holy Ghost. Two were baptized in Jesus' name. Two prayed back through to the Holy Ghost. Michelle got the Holy Ghost Monday night. I like the mountain. Somebody tell your neighbor, I like the mountain. Mountains are victorious places. But I'll tell you something about mountains. Mountains can also be lonely. And sometimes when you're on the mountain, the only place to go is down. And from the mountain, you can see a lot of valleys. But God says you're going to be blessed through the mountains and also the hills. Somebody say hills. Hills are higher than valleys, but they're not as high as mountains. And sometimes being blessed at a hill level, all you can see is mountains around you. And you're kind of like, sometimes I live in the hill where I want to be there really bad. Meaning I'm blessed, but I want to be blessed like that. And it takes away from the hill blessing. And they're not as high as mountains. And When you're on a hill, all you can see is mountains all around, and you begin to compare your hill to the mountains, and you can see valleys. But I'm here to tell you that a balanced blessing from God includes the mountains and the hills. It also includes the level ground of the earth. All of these are part of the blessings of God. And I'm going to just, I'm going to end with this. Moses, in speaking to Joseph, he then says this. He says, for the goodwill of him, Somebody say favor. I want the favor of God on my life. For the goodwill of him that dwelt in the bush. What he's talking about is Moses now. So Moses is talking about, he's talking to, to, to Joseph. And there's a little part of Moses. He's under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. But part of Moses' history gets into the prophecy. He starts talking about his personal history. He's talking about the burning bush. Somebody say the burning bush. And he, and he talks about the favor of him that dwelt in the burning bush. Hallelujah. He's saying God bless Joseph like that. He's remembering the day when God was in that bush. God was kind of hidden. God was kind of concealed in the bush. That burning bush was not consumed. It was hidden. You could see a little bit of God, but you couldn't see all of it. And Moses had to turn aside, and God, is, and God begins to talk to him out of the bush. And Moses says to Joseph, Oh, that you would be blessed with the favor of God that was hidden in the bush. It's kind of like you saying, Joseph, I wish you had the same hunger I did. I wish that you would reach and desire the blessings of God. That'll set you apart. You'll be blessed, separated from your brethren. Amen. I'll just say this as we move to a close right now. Brothers and sisters, there is a God that has favor that lives in the burning bush, and he's a little bit concealed. you got to chase him down sometime. 
There's a God that in your prayer, you got to reach for him a little harder sometimes. you got to put your roots down. you got to dig a well. If you want your life to be in balance, if you want to be a good father and a good parent to, uh, to all your children and a good husband and a good employee and a good employer, and you want to be a Christian and you want to do all the different areas and aspects of your life, you need a balanced blessing that comes from God. There needs to be somebody that chases after God's blessing that seeks his blessing. And somebody described it like this. They described it like this. They said that, I want to find it right here. Somebody was writing about the blessing of Joseph, and they said it's, it's a picture, it's like the variety of, of, of crops on different levels. It's on the hills, it's on the dale. You can see the ancient terraces on the sides of the hills rising one above the other. This is what Moses is putting a blessing on Joseph. As high as the eye can see, and even many still covered with these artificial levels on which are fig orchards and vineyards, the plains down below are filled with crops of grain. It's a fertile soil, a moist atmosphere with numerous streamlets and springs all combined, presenting a landscape of exquisite loveliness. And I just, I just felt like teaching on this tonight, brothers and sisters, that maybe sometimes you're frustrated trying to find balance in life. I'm here to tell you that the mountain is part of the blessings of God, but so is the valley. And the dark of the moon is just as much a blessing as the light of the sun. And if you'll be patient with God and grow when it's raining and grow when there's dew and grow when you got to dig down and find a well, if if you'll reach for God in the light of the sun, if you'll reach for God in the dark of the moon, if on mountains and hills, level land and valleys, then that's when you're praying will get dialed in and God will help you to read your Bible and and then the fasting will fall into place. You'll feel like a better father and husband, and he'll help you with your soul winning, teaching Bible studies, outreach. Might even help you with your diet and your exercise. Your lawn will still need mowed, but I really am telling you, when you get the favor of God on you, you got more time, and you can get to that broken down washing machine, and and you'll look around, and you'll always be struggling with balance. I'm just telling you, you always will. But you just got to go back and say, God, I want the favor of God, the God of the burning bush to be on my life. Is that how you feel tonight? Hey, this is called life, but God's here to help us, and it's a good life living for the Lord. And I'm done preaching, but if there's anybody under the sound of my voice that would say, Lord, that's what I want, is that balanced blessing for a well-rounded life then I'm going to open this altar for you right now. If there's somebody that wants God to help you to get all the pieces together, sometimes it seems frustrating. Hey, you need God's balanced blessing. He doesn't just give popsicles. He doesn't just give cotton candy. He doesn't just give the rain. Sometimes you got to dig for it. Somebody ought to come to this altar and say, oh, God, whatever your blessing looks like, I want it. Whatever your favor feels like, I need it. Whatever your goodwill is, put it on me, Jesus. I want to be well-rounded. I want to be the apostolic Christian that's mature. Come on, as you come, let's pray in the good times and the bad. A balanced blessing. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. I feel the Holy Ghost wanting to help somebody. Oh, God. Come on, I feel God wanting to help somebody. If you're in the dark of the moon, lift your hands and let God bring some precious things forth. If you're in the valley, lift your hands and let God bring some precious precious things out. Heaven's dew. Water beneath. Come on, he's a good father, an everlasting father. He on the
Come on, young men. I want to be strong for God. I want to be mature for God. Oh, yes, Lord. Hey, I want it all, all of the blessing, all of the blessing. Hallelujah. I want all of the blessing. I want all of the blessing. I want it all, Jesus. I want it all, Jesus. I want the waters.